Hey Rob Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a first look at Frozen Flame, a game that's been in development a while now. I've covered its progress over the last few years, but now it's here in early access launch for everyone to go and try. A mixture of survival, RPG mechanics, and of course co-op play. Apparently it's going to be having PvP survival added to it in the future as well, as well as some extra hard modes. It's a real good blender mix. I like the art style a lot. There's lots of progression with the character building, making the character into a battle mage, maybe a ranged archer, whatever Whatever it is you want and taking on a whole plethora of different creatures and enemies so go and check it out on steam right now and let me guide you through my first hour and a half two hours of frozen flame let's go so i checked out the base game mode which pretty much is survival light you don't actually need food you're not going to die if you don't eat but they do give you lots of buffs and you don't have to worry too much about first or sleeping or some of the other components but as you can see, they've got other game modes that will be live, I'm sure, soon, with campaign, survival, and another one coming soon, and in different ways to play with different amounts of players, as well as PvP. First few moments, as you would expect, is a little tutorial on the basics of movement and combat in the Asylum of Faceless. You'll learn how to fight some of these creatures, as well as attack and dodge. It's all pretty simple, but I'm guessing it's going to be fleshed out more with the skills and abilities that will unlock as you progress. It's not super heavy on massive amounts of lore and story as you begin, although there are a few little places that you'll pick up it, the beats of it, so I'm glad that's going to be added more in as we go through early access. Once you've completed that, you'll then be able to go ahead and customise and choose your character, and it's got some really good little choices here. Lots of different colours and lots of different hairstyles and face styles. And that's it, you're almost ready to start exploring Arcana on your own, really to get into grips with the combat taking on new enemies and more as the gates open up this is frozen flame so you're pretty much reborn as a pilgrim and you're going to be fighting the cursed ones and you'll come across other pilgrims too in survival mode or if you're playing on multiplayer settings so i've got a really good chance just to explore on my own but do remember that eventually some of them other game modes will have a proper pvp turned on so you'll have to not only contend with survival but also facing off against other pilgrims really simple easy to use ui you've got your bag then you've got craft then you've got friends in your bag of course you've got all your items you can get over encumbered so you're gonna have to be careful with weight management but there will be ways to increase this later the inventory system's pretty forgiving though you've got lots of slots for all your different weapons and stuff that you want to use and everything's really clearly marked you know exactly what stats a weapon has with the little text line that's on it and exactly how much flame experience you've got etc. As you quickly explore you'll come across things like teleporters, these will be able to get you across the map pretty quick and easy and this is just one of the islands that you can explore, there's a whole host of floating islands in the sky with new landscapes and new ways to find new creatures, new tools, new gear and new bosses. It looks like each island or location though has some prerequisites to complete first. In this instance I've got to go and hunt down three unique bosses. But first we've got to build ourselves up a bit. There is a full day and night cycle as you might expect and it does look like things get a bit more harder at night time. Whenever you pick up a new item you unlock the brand new recipes that you'll be able to make with it and you'll be expected to gather loads of stuff like stone and branches before getting tools and being able to chop trees down and go and find rock and ore deposits. There's plenty of NPCs that you come across that you'll be able to trade with and get new items from using the gold currency that you can accumulate by taking out bandits and finding in pots. Not to mention crates and some chests that you'll get for completing mini games. There's plenty of creatures that will try and take you down like the curse but you also come across these blue floating flower blobs which can turn dangerous at night time or if you attack them. Otherwise they'll pretty much be benign and they'll leave you alone. You also get to see the first of the mini games and there's a whole bunch of these scattered around the map. They do add a little bit more interest and something a bit different to do rather than just gathering resources. In this one it's pretty simple, I had to go and find the three stones. All before the little bar on top, you can see the blue went down to zero. And I got some XP out of it. These are basically frozen flames, that's what they're called. And once you get a new level, you can go to a stone and choose a new ability like I'm going to show you now. The skill tree is pretty large. There's a whole host of options. And it doesn't look like you really get locked out of anything. As long as you're willing to grind and get more flames, you can go ahead and upgrade your character in all sorts of different ways. Upgrading maybe your archery skills, your magical skills, or just increasing your health or stamina. 
So in just like an hour and a half, I'd already gained six skill points. So this was really good and easy to go ahead and start messing around with maybe a build. And it does look like you'll be able to reset your skill points by using one of the soul seeds. So nice and easy again, if you make a mistake or you feel like it's not working out, you can just reset your skills and try something a bit different. Usual things you might expect like gaining additional health, as I said, more stamina, or making sure that your weapons don't break as much, giving yourself extra durability, or combat energy, which is a system I've not had much of a chance to mess around with, but basically that's how you build up some of your special skills or special abilities that when you're in combat you'll gain experience and then be able to unleash it. Some skills will give you extra if you buy them when you defeat enemies, others when you take damage. So really these good options and choices to play a kind of build that you want to. Quite liked about this feature is that if you can see on the top left there, it's number two, it's nearly full up. If I were to die now, I would lose all of that progress from one to two. So it does create a bit of risk and reward. Are you gonna risk going up against a major bad guy or a major boss? Or are you gonna just farm a little few creatures just to get that final level up before then taking something on? And of course, you're spending your points. Although much like Dark Souls, as I'll show you a bit later, you can recover your flames lost if you die, and you don't lose any of your equipment when you die either. The combat, as I said, is pretty simple in the early days using nothing but just an axe, but you will be able to get much more sophisticated weapons, and of course lots of different armours. You normally get a drop at least from every enemy that you kill, usually some cloth, or maybe even a mask or piece of gear. You'll come across a variety of different treasure chests, some with requirements, some with mini-game events that you have to complete before you can actually access them. And then yet the usual tale of just gathering up as much of the resources. It all gets highlighted pretty easily once you get closer to it. Things like gathering the grass to make fibre, and then of course chopping trees down as well. Any of the smaller trees you see, you can go ahead and chop down, and then you'll be looking out for these deposits to go ahead and get flint in the early stages. The basics are pretty much there though, you'll find trees everywhere and anywhere there's rocks or maybe rivers you'll find either loose stones or some of these stone flint deposits. There's no climbing or mantling in the game but you can go ahead and jump a bit forgivingly, the terrain isn't that hard to get around. It's a really simple situation with the crafting and the gathering of resources. There's not a million different items that you need in the early stages, and you can go ahead and start growing some of the stuff you need to open up chests or maybe even fight some of the bosses, which I'll show you. Once you gain a few resources to craft the workbench, you'll be able to go ahead and craft new tools, including swords, staves, and of course, a bow, as well as some extra more basic armor set. There is durability in the game, so you will have to repair a lot of your weapons and armor as they take damage or you get using them. Some enemies may be better dealt with with certain weapons, like these guys seem to take burning a lot more compared to some of the other creatures, so I was definitely using my staff once I learned how to actually shoot. This was a simple flame spell, but it does look like you'll be able to unlock a whole host more once you start leveling up your flame. You can go ahead and swim in frozen flame as well, and you can capture fish to either go ahead and cook or take part in a mini game like I'm doing here. I'm so glad there's no fishing as I'm kind of sick of it being put into every survival crafting game going. Just let me be golem capturing the fish in my hands. So quite like this little mini game here, we found a nice statue that you can talk to, although he doesn't really have much to say. And then yeah, you've basically got to go around finding the flames in the ice. Now, I wasn't very tuned in the first time I did this and I ended up falling to my death pretty easily. F in chat, F in chat for the ice dive. But you can see you do get a bunch of negative damage modifiers to your durability, so they'll basically reduce your armor and weapons, and of course, yeah, you've lost your flame. Now you can go back and retrieve your flames that you lost up until that level. So you don't lose all of them, even if you've not spent all your points, only the progress you've made from like level five to level six. In this instance, it didn't put the flames directly where I died, it was just a little bit way off, but I did manage to retrieve all of them. I did much better on my second go, I picked up some extra loot including this energy potion and I finally managed to complete this run of getting all the flames. For my benefit I got some more experience so it's definitely worth taking part in these to give yourself a character boost and get as many skill points as possible. But I'm sure later ones will be much more difficult, you can see the ice modifier it would probably be doing more damage to me if we was playing in more survival mode or certainly if it gets any higher, it probably would start doing damage. So I quickly left before I froze. 
Another little quest was to activate this chest, I had to find the sigil scattered and hidden around on the branches. As I said, it's all really simple stuff, but I'm expecting them to get a bit more complicated and harder as I progress. The reward for this one was a big flame essence, and that's the stuff that you can basically consume to give yourself some more flame experience. So the tips guiding you through the first beats and learning how to survive and go around and explore are pretty light. It does leave it up to you to really work stuff out. There's a small one that will just say things like search for the keeper and maybe give a highlight in the sky if you really want it. But this is how you complete these islands, I do believe. You need to go and fight the bosses and retrieve their masks, then place them in these altars. Fast forward in a little bit to when I encountered my first boss, they're usually found in little climby areas or places that you have to work a way to get in and you usually need to activate the boss fight. In this case it was solid essence which you can grow and combine out of ingredients that you'll find. So he was a ranged boss and I pretty much decided to fight him with the same sort of weapon. Nothing too crazy or outlandish in these first worlds but I'm sure these bosses are going to get a lot harder. He did have a significant health pull but obviously making sure that you're pulling right back on your bow will do extra damage. You can gain critical hits by the looks of things as well if you hit certain points of the body or just random chances of getting extra damage. And I'm going to guess that it might scale up depending on how many players are actually taking it on. But once I worked out how to do maximum damage, this guy wasn't too much trouble at all. I got a huge amount of the flame XP there, as well as a whole bunch of coins and some more ingredients and stuff, including a way that you'll be able to go ahead and use some more XP whenever you need it. You can basically find frozen flame pods or frozen flame seeds and you can eat these and they'll give you some XP. With the hunter boss defeated, it gave me a piece of lower leg armor. Not a huge increase in what I maybe already would be able to craft, you had the resources, but it's definitely got more durability and yeah, a little bit more protection. So I hadn't obviously completed all the boss runs in this first instance, so I'm going to have to go and take on the other two. Do go and make sure you talk to all the NPCs as they will have stuff that you can trade for using your gold. In this case, a brand new bone weapon and a giant longsword. There's some other varied creatures like boars that might attack you on sight. This is a great way to get certain meat. Obviously all the weapons have their uses, the actual stave though doesn't fire as far as an arrow so there's only so far you can do it, or it didn't seem to be doing as much damage at range. But I'm looking forward to unlocking new spells and definitely getting more new weapons. So you will find enemies roaming around but often you'll be ambushed by some whenever you try and open up a certain chest or activate some extra loot. There is a stamina system at play when you're in combat so you will have to manage that or make sure that you get in abilities with your frozen flames that will give you more bonuses. In this chest I just got a bunch more gold meaning I could go and hopefully trade with some of the NPCs I'd already spoken to. Danger can come if you're a bit overwhelmed by different enemies and the enemies will fight other creatures that they find like boar so they may all turn on you sometimes so you've got to be a bit careful with that. If you want to be a bit more sneaky there is a sneak function too so I'm guessing there will be a way to make a more of an assassin build later. Like I mentioned before, at night time it does get a bit more dangerous. Then blue harmless little flower blobs, they turn into firing little red blobs. If you take them out though, you can get some resources from seeds that you can combine to make special stuff that you'll use either in crafting or to use a sacrifice to fight some of the bosses. Big component obviously once the survival aspect is added in the next game mode will be cooking. At the moment you can cook a whole variety of all the foods and bugs and meat that you'll find and it takes a few seconds which you can leave on the cook while you do other stuff. Nice and simple exploratory system where you just cook something and see what it gives you. Mostly healing buffs or stamina buffs. There are so many combinations of food to make I can't wait to experiment a bit more and see if they give me more buffs or get better ingredients to do a little bit. Some do regenerate your health or stamina over time, others might give you an immediate boost or give you extra protection and some definitely do give things like extra resistance or damage modifiers. You use a hammer to go ahead and base build and put certain things down and it's pretty simple and easy. The blocks, the tile set are pretty small so you will have to double up a little bit on some of these. But yeah, it's a simple process where you need to craft and put some of your workbenches on a actual floor. As I said, there's three different tiers. Makeshift wood, wood and then stone. And at the moment it's still a little bit limiting in terms of the decorative pieces and the build pieces. But it's functional enough that you'll be able to build something and maybe make it look a little bit pretty. I'm hoping as we go through early access of course we'll get much more build pieces added. 
It has got a nice radial system though, where you can turn things around exactly whatever angle you want. And I'm looking forward to learning how I will be able to make the next upgrades or tiers in the wood and the stone. I'm guessing I'm gonna need some new crafting benches. Do be warned though that if you build out the most basic structures in the more advanced game modes, then you might have to contend with weather. There is weather effects as well that can make your bases basically rot away. So you're gonna to have to be careful and see if you can get upgrades as soon as you can. If you're a bit more community minded, you can make buildings and set them so that other players can join or just friends or just yourself, meaning no one can really come into your base and take your goods. Although I'm guessing in survival mode, you may have to be a bit more careful about base raiding. Although I'm not 100% sure if that's a feature going to be added in just yet. It seems to me at the moment, it's purely just PvP as you're out exploring the world in certain game modes. As always, getting your grind on will result in much bigger bases or go ahead and just survive in a small tiny box. So one of the things that I'm looking forward to is being able to grow my own crops and stuff. At the moment you can grow planters and these are how you actually upgrade or get yourself some more essence and things you need to summon the bosses as I mentioned. But I love the idea of having a special built area and putting these crop plots all around and growing exactly what I need. You won't have to wait days and days for your crops to grow. In fact, it's almost instantaneous. They'll just pop out and you can go ahead and harvest and gather them. So it's almost like an apocryphy station in a way. Really like the art style as I'm running around. It's got loads of ruins, interesting places to explore that encourages you to go. And if you're still looking for a bit of help, then you've got these beams of light that will direct you a little bit as well with objectives or question marks to investigate. So at the moment in the base game, sleeping doesn't actually fast forward time or anything. It simply just gives you a little bit of a buff. And I'm sure that's going to be the same in the other game modes as well. And it doesn't serve as a respawn point, which I was a bit surprised by, but maybe it'll be an upgrade later on. If you die, you will respawn back at one of the teleport walls closest to your base. Once you've completed all the masks in this instance, that's where I'm guessing we'll get access to the next island and I'm sure it's going to be more difficult. You will come to the edge of the well border and a force field to go through, just give you another warning that maybe you shouldn't be venturing too far. Something to look out for, if you decide you want to get back to your base pretty quickly, you can use a Returnal Stone. These you can pick up as you're playing and they'll basically put you at a spawn point. Trouble is, it reduces all of your XP, so make sure you've got a small amount rather than a large amount like that had. Useful if you've come into a contact with a much harder difficult place and you really don't want to have to go all the way back. So that's pretty much how to play and what to expect in the first few hours. I really enjoyed the time. It's a chill little game when you're playing it on your own or in co-op. I'm sure it'll be great fun just messing around and getting used to the building mechanics and building something pretty big for you and your clan. When it comes to the PvP, that will be interesting as well. And I can't wait to get into that side of things a bit more as a quite fancy idea of maybe having a bit more open combat. But the world is gorgeous. It's a really nice looking art style and I like the environment. It's pretty easy to gather. There's nothing too overcomplicated with 20 billion ingredients to craft something. You can pick up the gist of it and it's got some decent tutorials all the way through as well if you need any extra assistance. There's a compodium as well which you can look up to find something that you might have missed out on. Another bonus feature of the game is that it does seem that the world will be changing slightly every new playthrough that you do. So although the islands might be similar, the way that you progress through the system does look like it's like a tile basis or it flips around. So it has got an element of procedural generation in there as well to keep things a little bit more fresher. As you would expect with a survival game, there is going to be a bit of grind and getting resources, but nothing that seemed too obtuse. It didn't take me too long at all to get enough resources to start building up a base or getting upgrades or cool new little weapons. In the initial, I guess, tutorial world, it wasn't feeling like I was being attacked every two seconds, and I could always run away from trouble if I just really wasn't feeling a fight. It's a really good, solid start for early access. I think this game's got lots of potential, and I'm definitely going to be covering it in some way, shape, or form going forward. Mastering the abilities, mastering each unique kind of play, whether it be ranged, melee, or a mixture of both, and of course, using the staves and unlocking the brand new spells. The atmosphere and the music's still pretty good, and yeah, it's a really cool little game, so absolutely go and check it out on Steam. The developers had a ton of betas and alphas all throughout its progress, which I've kind of kept in touch with and reported on way back, way back when, 
So it's great to see him actually hit full early access and I can't wait to see the updates they're going to add in the future. So there we go, more info, go and check it out on the Steam page once again and look out for more videos from me in the future. Until next time Ratbags, I'll catch you later.